Hi viewers and welcome to another episode of Wealth Wednesday. We are so happy to have you back. And today we want to talk about something that is at the back of the minds of everyone. At one point or another, you've had someone saying, economy ni mbaya, economy si omzuri. We all want to understand what is this economy and why is it bad? So stay tuned to learn more about the state of the economy for the year 2023. Today I'm here with Mr. Steven Maleche. Thank you so much for coming and I will allow you to introduce yourself. Thank you. I'm Steven Maleche. I work with All Mutual Investment Group as the head of research. So um, we wanted to speak about the economy, the status yeah. of the economy. Everyone and their mother out there is talking about the economy, you know. Yeah. We are all wondering um, why are things happening the way they are? You know, why is it all of a sudden it's expensive? You know, when you go shopping, the shopping that you used to do for 5,000 bob, now it's 15,000 or it's 20,000, yeah? Yes, yes, it is. Everything is so expensive. So let's just first start with what is the status of the economy? Well, if you, if you look at the economy, we're doing much better than where we were 2020. Remember when everything was shut down? You yeah. couldn't move, there were curfews. Mm. You had to be home by, is it 7 p.m. or 4 p.m.? <laughs> or 4 p.m.? Men right. learned how to walk to the house by six. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So everything is now open. Mm -hmm. You can travel across the country. Yeah. So that has that has brought back some positivity to the economy. Mm. Now, what you're talking about is the rise in the cost of goods. And that was mainly experienced last year. I mean, if you look at last year, mm -hmm. the price of mainly food went up. If you look at your cooking oil, your mm. milk, if you look at mm. your unga, everything went up. And that was mainly because of two things. One. Mm -hmm. We had the disruption from Russia and Ukraine, the mm -hmm. conflict. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. remember, about 20% of the world's oil comes from there. Yeah. More than 15% of the wheat mm. from there. So, so the knock-on effects on everything. Yeah. And we're still recovering from COVID, which at that time, China was still shut down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that rise in the cost of food, fertilizers that grow food, and also the oil prices, that is what fed into the local local economy mm -hmm. that's why you saw the cost of everything rising and not mm -hmm. only in kenya if you look across in countries in the west in the uk in the us in the eurozone for the first time in a really long time they saw high prices they saw their prices rising yeah so in those countries prices on average were not rising by more than one percent a year yeah. they saw more than five percent mm. so that is what's been affecting the economy and that's what everyone has been feeling that pinch yeah. And if you look in the current year, yes, prices are not rising as as they were rising last year. They're not. They're not rising at the They're same not. rate. They're not because rising. I don't know. My 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 account is saying different, eh? Yes, your account <laughs> is saying different because what has happened is yeah. the price of what you used to buy at a hundred has gone to one fifty. Yes. And it has not come down to a hundred. It's still at no. one fifty. Oh, yes. But it has not gone to two hundred. Uh -huh. So you're feeling that pain. Yeah. In that. That's what we call the cost of living. So so what you're buying at 100 is at 150. Mm -hmm. Your salary has not gone up 50%. No. So, so that pain, that's, that's the pain you're feeling. Yeah. But the, the plus side is that what we're feeling a little less of this year is that it's not rising to, one, to 200. It's, it's going more towards 160. But that pain is what we're feeling throughout the economy. That's so there's rising. definitely a rise, yes. but it's not as steep as last year. No, it isn't. It it's, isn't. it's a slow rise. It's a slow rise. So we are doing better. We might say we, we are doing better. That, that's what you hear <laughs> when we say the inflation rate yeah. has come down. So okay. the, the, the change in that, in that price yeah. of, of your goods is not as much as last year. Would we say also elections, last year's elections, are also playing a part in what's going on? No, no, I wouldn't say it. I mean, mm -hmm. generally we seem to have gotten around the election cycles. Yeah. So they don't affect the economy as much. Well, okay. What really affected us was... That war in Ukraine, mm -hmm. the disruptions, yeah. and the continued disruptions post-COVID. So the people who are sitting there thinking that this is happening because we had elections last year, no, that's a completely different that's, story. That's, it's, a, that's it's, a different story. It's because of factors outside of the country. Exactly. And also how they impacted local factors, the rise in the cost of everything locally. And also yeah. remember at the same time, we import quite a bit of food, fuel, yeah, and the shilling lost a bit of ground. 
So we started at 103 mm -hmm. the previous year. If you look at where we are today, we are past 120. We'll come back to the shilling. Yes. Well, you are still on the cost of goods. If I may ask, so someone is hearing, okay, fine, oil went up, or oh, supply chains in China. How do these things affect me, who's out there selling my cabbages? Well, how they affect you is that, remember, nowadays we are connected. Yeah. So compared to many years ago where everything you wanted was around you. Yeah. So if, if, if you wanted food, you bought from your neighbor's farm. If you wanted... Uh, any other implement, it was around you, maybe mm. made in a factory in your area or in your town. Now everything comes from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So if you look at fuel, our fuel comes from the Middle East. So if the global price goes up, we buy, for, we, we buy it at a higher price. Yeah. If you look at food, significant amounts of our food are imported mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from all across the world. Mm. I mean, if you look, some of our wheat used to come from Ukraine. Ukraine yeah. was supplying us with fertilizer. Now when they can't supply fertilizers, then farmers can't plant as much, even if they have, have the seed. Mm. And if they plant, output is not as good. So we have less maize produced. Okay. So increasing the cost. So of we go back to importing some more. Exactly. All right. So, um, um, and, um, so if, if we look at the year, yes. yeah, we're just at the beginning of the year. So most of us want to know what will the year look like? What is it going to be like, um, I don't know, in June, in September, going to December? Are we going to have it rough? Is it going to be a bit easy or, I don't know, should we brace ourselves? I say it's a tough year because remember, yeah. cost of living has risen. Mm -hmm. It's not come down. Yeah. Right? So that, that is still going to weigh on people. Mm. So more and more of our income is still going to the basics our food, our transport, our shelter. But when you look at the plus side, one, as long as we have good weather, if we have good weather and then the cost of our vegetables, our potatoes, and some of our food stuff goes Can down. Can be manageable. Yes, becomes mm -hmm. a bit more manageable. Mm -hmm. And as long as the global prices for oil stay stable and, and maybe come down a little bit, then it, it, it's, it's going to take away some of the pain. It's not going to be an easy year, but take away some of the pain. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe what we could talk about is let's talk about the future. Let's talk about where we are going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, we've just had past twenty twenty three. Yeah, past twenty twenty three. Let's mm -hmm. look all the way up to twenty twenty six. Yeah, next three years, what's happening? So we've just had a new regime. In. Mm. What has the reg what, What's the regime's plan? The regime's plan is to try and balance what the government borrows mm -hmm. and what the government spends. Mm -hmm. So there's always been a gap. So if you look at the last budget, yeah. the government spent about 3 trillion shillings. It collected 2 trillion in taxes. Mm -hmm. So you see the, right there. There's a gap, there's 1 a trillion. Gap, almost a trillion, mm -hmm. right? It's about 2.3 trillion. Mm -hmm. So that, tri that trillion needs to be financed somehow. Mm -hmm. You can either borrow locally in the local yeah. market using mm -hmm. your treasury bills and bonds, or you borrow abroad. Mm -hmm. So when they borrow locally, that takes away money from the banking sector and also raises the interest rate. So banks don't lend as much to the rest of us and they put the money in government. Okay. When, 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 when they borrow less locally, there's more money in the economy and interest rates are likely to come down. Yeah. And there's more lending to the general economy. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be the direction that the current administration is taking. So, so that's what to look out for in terms of the, of the future. So, so how will that translate to the next three years? So in the next three years, if, if, that, if, if the plan works, mm -hmm. because when you look at the, at the plan, it's feasible. Yeah. It's, it's logical. It's the workable. <laughs> it's workable. The, the difficulty is in executing it. Yeah. Government must live within what it plans to spend, mm -hmm. not spend more. Mm -hmm. And then it must collect more in, in, in revenues and mm -hmm. taxes. Mm -hmm. So if, if it works, then we go back to where we were almost 15, 20 years ago yeah. when we had very low interest rates and banks were literally, as some people say, hawking loans. Mm. So it will become more easy to get credit. Because you can yeah. imagine today, uh, one, year, one year interest rate, what, what the government is borrowing at is at 10%. So that's the one year treasury bill. Rate. Yes. So you can imagine your loan cannot be for one year less than 10% interest. Yeah. So if that went to 8 
you see your loan would come become it much cheaper. a little bit and if and if banks lent more to people then people will try more businesses people will buy more land more houses and and you'll see the effect on the prices of everything yeah. okay yes so so whatever is happening right now yeah yes. um, whatever is happening in the economy yes. the way they you know we are feeling the pinch yes. of it is it a localized issue or are we seeing this also in african other african countries and um, just across the world it's a global issue right now mm. so across the world you are seeing all countries are face, have been facing high inflation mm -hmm. so the prices of goods especially food has gone up most most significantly over the last one year yeah so it has slowed down the economy across the world if you look at all the forecasts of the likes of IMF and the World Bank, they show some of the more advanced economies are going to grow much more slowly yeah. in the current year. So, so it's it's all over the world. It's it's a tough time for the for the globe, but you know as they say, you you you're more concerned with what's happening in your house. Yes. So locally, when you look at it, yes, it's a painful time, but we've been here before. If you go back, a few, quite a number of years, if you go back between 2000 and 2004, we we're, we're in the same we we're in the same kind of situation. The economy was not growing. Mm -hmm. Banks were not lending, mm -hmm. jobs were not being created fast enough. Mm -hmm. And how did we get out of that? The then administration made sure that what the government was spending and what it was borrowing were almost equal. So they didn't need to borrow a lot. Yeah. So that way they didn't they did they didn't have to look for money in the local market. So okay. interest rates dropped because government because the government was not willing to borrow at a high rate. Mm -hmm. And banks not having any other place to place their money. They had to go look for the person out yes. there. Yes. <laughs> remember they had all these sales people selling yes. loans on the side of the road. You you would find at the streets people selling loans. People yes. would call you and tell you uh, you have an account. Yes. Uh, you qualify for X amount. Yes. And what happened? People borrowed the money. People started sm small businesses. Some, some it was consumption, but when they consume it's at someone else's business. Yes. People built houses. People bought cars. So that whole growth in business and yeah. just led to the full economic growth. Okay. Yes. All right. So there you have it. We have been explained to what is going on in the economy. I hope you've learned a thing or two. Thank you so much for joining us. Like, share, subscribe, and remember to engage with us on all our social media channels. Thank you.